This is the fifth in a series of messages called Hear and Be Healed. Never intended on it to be this way. I prepared one message and it went into, after the third one, I said, Lord, I, I, most people can't stay interested in anything for three or more weeks. And uh, he said to me, my, the Holy Spirit spoken to my heart, this is not a series, this is a shift. And that moment when I felt that I knew God had set me free, we're going to talk about hear and be healed through the blood of Jesus. You understand Leviticus chapter 17 and 11 is where it all begins for us because it's where we find in the Bible it tells us that in fact that there is life in the blood that is in the body. I've given you the blood on the altar, purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. From that very moment, they had the blood of both goats and bulls, and they had to have blood sacrifice. But And all of different, uh, from the time that man is known, he's tried to appease God by some kind of sacrifice. The Hebrew writer says it to us, in fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything that was purified was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. No forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Twelve days that I descended into a dark place, and five days was very wicked and brutal. Got to the place where I could not, no longer read my Bible, couldn't focus, couldn't, couldn't hardly have anything around me, uh, everything. It was just kind of a dark place, and I thought, Lord, I don't know. I don't know if this is that moment, if this is my appointment or not, but I could hear. And in the moment of hearing, I had that music on. I had the Word of God in my heart, and I had the music in my ear. You see, when you're doing good, you enjoy the music. But when you're in a tough place, you hear the words. You hear the words. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. This is a song that just brought me so much comfort. It's between 1 and 5 in the morning when the demons come that I needed something to hear that would bring me through a very dark place. And so I latched hold on a word. This song was sent to me, and I want to tell you, thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied to our lives. I'm telling you, I thank God for it, Adrian, and the choir. Let's do this together. Enjoy us. Let's worship the Lord. Thank 
to his name his name amen the name of jesus thank you so much adrian and the choir without blood there is no life in the physical body well the same is true about this bible it's the blood of jesus that flows through this bible that makes everything work and through our life in our veins and in this if you cut my bible it's going to bleed 427 times in the bible there we have it there it's the blood it's not a minor thing it's major for you and i the gospel is dead without the blood our eternal life is deprived if without the blood so much is right there for us so let me tell you we can't even have healing without the blood it's the price that was paid Jesus said, this is the blood of the New Testament. Even the shed of, of, of many of the, of, of the shedding of my blood for the remission of sins, the removal, not only forgiveness, but the removal of sins. Paul says it this way, we have redemption through his blood. Peter added, we are not redeemed with silver and gold, but with, not with precious stones, but with the precious blood of the Lamb, the blood of Christ. John said, it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses all from sin. Thank God for the blood. Then you get through the Gospels, and there you go to the book of Acts. You get into Acts and see there's 22 sermons by four men. And what did they preach on? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Why? Because they knew from the Old Testament into the New Testament, you better be covered by the blood. Now, the word covered has two particular things that are in store in mind for you and I. Covered is this ideal for a payment that covered the cost. You ever had somebody or heard somebody give money and say, now does that cover it? Paid the price. Does it cover the cost? But it also has this sense as well as hiding it from sight. I'm telling you, get your sins under the blood of Jesus so that it might be removed from sight. There might be somebody else who might not remember about them. They might want to recall it to your memory. I love moments. I've had moments that people have been through hard times. I love when they come up 10 years later, 15, 20. I mean, a long time after they go, Pastor, you remember when I, and I'll, I'll go, uh, no. Then they'll smile, now, Pastor, you remember, and I go, no. And they'll go, Pastor, you, surely you, you didn't forget. I said, why should I remember something that the blood of Jesus has covered from your life and removed from you? I'm not going to join with the devil to condemn and raise that back to your memory. I'm not going to be a recaller of your past. I'm going to be a reminder of your future because it's covered by the blood. You know, it's hard to see the blood. Why? Because most of the time it's internal. And if it's being seen, it's not a good thing. You have to be cut or injured or something for the blood to be visible. But I want you to take a look at the blood with me for just a few moments. I want you to see this because it's not so important that you see the blood. It's more important that God sees the blood applied to your life. It's more important that he looks down and sees that you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Are you with me today? So let's analyze this. If we analyze it, we can say it this way. The blood of Jesus is perfect. What do you mean perfect? It starts with a virgin birth. Jesus was not born from a man. He was, in, in fact, placed inside of her womb by supernatural. We call it the virgin birth. Judas said, I betrayed innocent, perfect blood. Paul says, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. And Jesus asked the question, which of you would convince me of sin? Which of you? Only man ever on this planet to ask the question, which of you can convince me of sin? Why? Because he was perfect. In fact, the Hebrew writer says he's the kind of priest we need 
because he's holy and blameless, unstained by sin, blameless. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. And Peter would say, and who did no sin, neither was guile found in him. How come? Well, the reason is this. Thank you for asking. You understand a natural father would have imparted the sin nature of Adam. To, uh, by, from, he would have put it there to Christ, but he had no natural father. It, it provided you and I. We are born in sin. But the virgin birth is, 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 is so important to your salvation. Don't think that's a minor thing. It's major. The Bible clearly teaches us in Matthew 1, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as what? God with us. Here it is. A woman gave birth to a child without a man. Adam's sin nature was not passed in the offspring. The bloodline comes from the man. The bloodline comes from a man. And so there were no impurities in Christ. His blood was perfect. In fact, his blood was pure. When they applied it, they saw it's pure as can be. Again, listen to the Hebrew writer. Under the Old Testament, it was the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer can cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more. I like that. Just think. How, you got to stop and think about it. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our conscience. Leave it right there. Purify your conscience. Listen to me. Don't ever believe the lie that let your conscience be your guide because your conscience can get dirty. Your conscience can get so dirty that there's no light that can come through it. You can sear your conscience. You can behave beyond your conscience. You can stop the knock at your heart and find yourself doing things you would never believe. Your conscience will never be your guide. If the devil wrote a Bible, he would say, let your conscience be your guide. No, your conscience needs to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus so the light of God can come through and show you the way and let you know, but the blood of Jesus is so pure that it will clean, cleanse you from your conscience from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. Oh, you mean clean conscience is a key to wonderful worship? You better believe it. It's no wonder. Listen, if you are finding an edge of all for your worship, it might be that your conscience needs to be clean. You might need to go back and say, cleanse me, oh God, afresh and anew, because worship is a result of knowing you've been set free you've been set free and you can worship him that's why it's so important that he says for by the power of the eternal spirit christ offered himself to god as a perfect sacrifice for sins i learned just a couple years ago david they take blood and they put it through a machine and on the other side impurities and things come it's called chelation and you can take your blood through a machine and back into your body. Isn't that incredible? Like a dialysis for the kidneys. And with that, because they're what? They're trying to get the impurities out of the blood. But I want you to know that I, I believe in and I trust what John says. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. So my hope is not in the Assemblies of God denomination, in the Catholic Church, in the Evangelical Word, and for any church. My hope is not even in Billy Graham or any other man. My hope is in Jesus. He's, whoa, that sounds like the words of a great song. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Yeah. Thank God that yesterday is gone. Oh, oh, my sins are forgiven. Here it is. Listen to this. See, I've been washed by the blood. Oh, we ought to sing that again, bro. Oh, that's why I say, oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. It was the Apostle Peter. Now listen, that, that doesn't take off preaching time. 
The singing don't take off preaching time, okay? It helps you reset, but you come on in the hanging. Would you go with me on this one today? Let's go all the way through. Let's go 70 yards for a touchdown today. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go all the way. And so Peter said it this way, for you know, it's much you've been not being redeemed with corruptible things. Why? It's not corruptible. His blood is pure. His blood is perfect. But his blood, you want to know how active his blood is? It's perpetual. It goes on and on. Now, in the Old Testament, an animal sacrifice had to be year after year and day after day. The blood of bulls and goats provided forgiveness on the installment plan. You were only pardoned for a little while, temporarily, because you had to need another sacrifice. You did something wrong, bring a sacrifice. And it got so costly, some people just hung out by the temple. <laughs> and that's not even in there, but I it blessed my soul because y'all don't have a clue what I just said. Yeah. And, and why? Because they had to have the covering for their sins. And so they had to go get another, another goat, another bull, another pigeon, another turtle done. They had to have something because the blood had to be, you had to, it didn't last very long. Blood, it wasn't perpetual. It was just temporary. Listen to the Hebrew writer as I skip through a few of these. Unlike other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins first and then for the sins of the people. What do you mean? A priest had to have their own sins forgiven? Yes. Uh, my mother, I'd come home and I'd have all kinds of starry eyes about the latest one. And, and I remember as a teenager, if I thought I was going to live, if you could just take me to a Jimmy Swagger crusade, I'm going to live forever if I could just get one. And my mother didn't like it. And she says, I want you to remember not everything that glitters is gold. And, that, and, and at the cross, the, la- the ground is level at the cross for all men. And those two things she was teaching me something there we all need the same ground there is no higher ground we all at the level ground of the cross because even the priests had to give a sacrifice for the sin but not jesus once and for all he says this he offered himself as the sacrifice for people's sins again it's found there in hebrew with his own blood not the blood of goats and bulls. Don't y'all get too excited. Not with his own. He entered the most holy place once and for all to secure our redemption. Again in Hebrews, if it had been necessary, Christ would have had to die again and again. But he ain't going to die for you. He's done died for you. What more can God do for you? What more do you think something else has got to happen? You know, sometimes I'm just not worthy to be forgiven. Oh, get over yourself. You ain't that important. You better understand Jesus is important. And if he will give his son, there is no other sacrifice for you. Don't you start that and think that just because I've done something I won't be. Yes, you're forgiven. In Jesus' name, I come against that lie that thinks that they, oh, I don't know if God will ever forgive me. Who do you think you are? He died for the sins of the world and yours. There ain't going to be a monument in heaven to you saying, this is the only one God couldn't forgive. Get over that. It's a lie from hell. Let me get back to my notes. I'm not going to make some of you nervous. Come on. He says in Hebrews, but our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins. I'm fighting for you today. Good for all. He sat down at the place of the right hand of God, God the Father, and the Father said, that'll cover it. That'll cover it for all of eternity. Are you with me today? The blood of the everlasting accomplishment. Not only is it perpetual, the blood of Jesus is powerful. It takes care of our sins. Are you here with me today? It takes care. It's effective. And in other words, the blood that was spilled on that moment still has the same power that it had the moment that Jesus died. The blood still retains its power. We call it in theology, efficacy. The efficacy of the blood. It's just a word that means what? It's still effective. The blood of Jesus. There is, there is still power in the blood. That sounds like a great song, David. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. And would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Come on, sing it. See, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. One more time, say there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. 
There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, yes. Great songs come from the Word of God. Listen, do you come back here, you that are worshiping online. Now you come back here. Don't, don't leave me. Now you in this room. Don't check out. Don't go to pouting on me because I got a little. Come on. Now come back. Why? I'm trying to help you today to understand you've been redeemed to God by the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12 says, and they defeated him. And they defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the Testament. That's how powerful it is. It's so powerful that it continues. False religion always attacks the blood. False religion. Listen to me. We are, have our roots in what's called Wesleyan faith holiness. It means three different movements. The Wesleyan movement, the faith movement, and the holiness movement. Birth the assemblies of God, the church of God, the church of God in Christ, and so on and so on. John Wesley would roll over in his grave when he found out a whole movement named after him. The Methodist Church took the blood out of the songbooks. Every, always, they will always attack the blood. False, I mean, it's always coming after the blood. Mary Baker Eddy of the Christian Scientist. I don't care if you're Tom Cruise or anybody else. If you want to uh, just embrace the lie, that's a bunch of garbage. She says the material blood of Jesus is no more effervescent to cleanse from sin when it was shed upon the cursed tree than when it's flowing through his veins. Are you kidding me? Great Bible teacher in Texas said that red liquid that ran through the veins of Jesus is not related to our salvation. Are you out of your mind? Makes for great preaching because I may have something to quote because that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. The Hebrew writer says without the remission of sin, without the blood of Jesus, there'd be no removal of sin. I'm thankful today. We want you to know what it means to have the blood of Jesus. And so we get to the word, it's a legal word, in acquittal. To acquit the blood of Jesus is permanent. Not only will it go perpetual, it'll be permanent over your life, judge. You, this, I'm, I'm using a little language. Now you tell me if I'm right or not, you shake your head. And if you ever do this, then tell me later. What, but, to, but to quit, it's a heavy word. It's a legal word. To quit means to be free, to clear, to absolve. I mean, it's done. It's far-reaching. For that thing that they brought you to trial for, once you've been tried and acquitted, you can't be tried for that ever again. Even if there's new evidence, even if there's new, the judge said, even if there's no evidence, you say, well, that's, you know, that's not fair. Well, to acquit means to be free to clear, to absolve. You, it can never come back on you. Ask OJ. Wait, I shouldn't have said that, should I? I'm sorry, I should make, make, make sure, I'm, I shouldn't have put that. Come on now, Out, outrageous, the whole world, watch. If a glove don't fit, you can't acquit. That's the whole little thing about that. And the whole world said, yeah, but justice wasn't done. I know it. And it is no more outrageous than you being forgiven of your sins when you know and I know you're as guilty and I'm as, as guilty as any man that ever been alive because we've been born in sin and we know that justice hasn't been done. And, but what I've got news for you, his mercies are new every morning. Not only my past sin, my present sin, and my future sin, it's covered by the blood. Isaiah says, I've been, I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I've scattered your offenses like the morning mist. Oh, return Turn to me, for I have paid the price to set you free. The psalmist said, as far as is the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from you. And he promised and said, I will never no more remember them for you against you ever again. That's how permanent the blood of Jesus is on our life. It still is there. Do we need to make things right with God? Does that mean, oh, yes, why? Because you need that window of your soul cleansed so you can come back to worship with God. And that's why your feet need to be cleaned from walking in this world. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. Anybody in the room believe that? But I want justice. Like the woman who walked in that photography shop, she turned to photography. I, these selfies just don't do me justice. Do me. He turned around and said, lady, you don't need justice, you need mercy. Come on now. I need mercy today. I will never lift my voice and say, I want what's coming to me. Not me. I'll take the blood of Jesus. Anybody in the room? Anybody online? Because we got, well, what kind? What, what was Jesus' blood? Was it A, A, B? Was it, was it B? Was it O, O positive? No. The Bible tells us what kind of, in, let's pray. Peter says it this way. He calls it the precious blood 
of the land. Precious is a word describing gemstones, gold, silver, and, and diamonds were called precious. But Peter said it was the precious blood. What type of blood was Jesus? The precious blood of Jesus, the sinless, spotless lamb. Oh, there was a, a, a on summer nights when I was a child, I remember to this day, after my mother said she'd tackle me, she'd have my brothers and sisters all kind of bring me in like, a, like some kind of a, 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 a dog out herding sheep. They all had to herd me in. She'd tackle me finally, get me to go to, because I told her cowboys don't have baths but once a week. <laughs> but she'd throw me in that water, put me on that swing, and then she'd say, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. What great words. Yes. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make Behold again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. So, ah, yes, amen. I read a story recently. I love this story. I, I read this man. He was a very wealthy old man, had a, a love for elaborate collection of paintings. He'd, he traveled the world going after Van Gogh and Monet and others and costly rare. And he, tra he transferred that love of paintings to his son, and they got to enjoy that as they traveled and bought these paintings for wherever they could find them. But as his son got a little older, he en enlisted in the army. He's placed in the medical corps, and, and in that moment, in severe battles, he would find himself dragging people out to safety and taking care of them. But on one particular day, he did uh, take a wound that would take his life and uh, was wounded. And news came to the dear man, and his wife had already passed, and it just devastated him. Suddenly, nothing ever mattered, grieved in loneliness for a long time. One day, a knock on the door, and a young man came with a package. And the young man explained, this is uh, one of, I, 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 am, I am one of many soldiers that your son saved my life. He said, he not only drugged me out of the uh, fire, he, he would minister to me. He'd take care of me. He'd, he'd bind me up. And he said, I was there that day when he got wounded and passed. He said, and all, we all know he talked about you and those paintings. He said, I got a love for art. I'm not very good, but... He opened that package and said, sir, I drew, a, I drew a picture for your son. And the old man took that picture and hugged that picture. And though it wasn't very rare or costly or anything, he loved, he immediately took down one of those real million dollar pictures and put that picture of his son up and suddenly it pulled him up out of his depression and he'd just rock in his chair and look at that picture and, and, and just imagine, had, 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 had a real resemblance of his son and he just loved that picture, but time comes on and he passes. And he leaves all of his art to an auction. And so hundreds and hundreds of collectors came to bid on the auction. And uh, the will stated this. The will stated that the first picture to be, to be auctioned off would be the, the picture of my son, he said. And so when the auctioneer put that picture up, everybody's disappointed. Let's get on with the real paintings. We didn't come here for that. And the auctioneer said, yes, but the will says we've got to sell this one first. And, 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 and so can somebody give me $100? And 
Nobody said a word. Give me 50. Give me 25. Nobody said a word. And finally, a kind old gentleman in the back said, for God's sake, would you take $10? Would you take $10? Sold. The gavel falls. And suddenly the auctioneer makes the announcement and says, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the auction. And with a gasp, the, the whole crowd's puzzled and upset. And it says this, the will says that whoever gets the pictures of the sun, whoever gets the picture of the sun gets all the paintings. And they said, what do you mean, $10? I mean, these are millions and millions. I know, but he said, whoever gets the sun gets it all. I'm trying to tell you something today. If you get the sun, you'll get all that the Father has for you today. It's powerful. It's perfect. It is pure. It's for your life and my life. It's even for a pandemic. What do you mean? We're living in a very aggressive world. We're living in a violent world. So when it comes to aggression, the blood of Jesus is protective. You understand all of this begins in Exodus chapter 12. It's when there is instruction given. We know, that this, we know the story. The Hebrews have been under slavery in Egypt. They've gone through uh, different plagues, and now it's coming on the whole earth, and there's a death angel that's going to visit just like there feels like a death angel. Every day we hear about a death angel visiting. And, and he says, Moses says, God has said something to me. Here's the word of the Lord. Take the blood and apply it to the doorposts and the lentils on both sides. Apply the blood. I don't know what the conversations were like, David, but I can imagine that there was a house full. And, and a man says, J Joseph says to Naomi, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Yeah, he said, I know, but Moses said he's heard from God and he's not been wrong yet. So get the blood there and put it on the sign. I believe Naomi convinced Joseph and Joseph went out and said to his brothers, you won't believe what that woman had me doing. She got me having blood. She got me getting up on Sunday morning after I watched football all day and dragging me to church. Why? Because she's trying to get some blood applied to your heart and life and trying to apply that blood on there. It doesn't make sense to a watching world, but I'm telling you, cover your life with the blood of Jesus because why? Moses said only those who have the blood applied when the death angel comes by, they get to escape and here it is in 12 chapter 12 verse 13 but the blood on your put it on the doorposts it'll serve as a sign marking the houses where you're staying when I see the blood I'll pass over you there's a when the death angel reaches for the name I will pass this plague of death will not touch you when I strike the line and we talk about being under the blood this is where it comes you understand that blood was the prevention of judgment it was the prevention of judgment falling because there was a judgment on Egypt. You say, okay, now, now you're going to tell us that we, we, there, and we no, I know, I know believers who pass, pass, or don't. I'm not talking, I'm telling you, all the way to a dark place until you pass through something that's unknown, all the way when death is the final judgment on sin and the final blow against our life, Apply the blood to your life, and when you go through, you will pass judgment and come into redemption by the blood of Jesus. That's what it means. Oh, what a week. What a week. On Tuesday mornings, we have our staff prayer. It's, it's, it's not a moment when we have the choir and we don't have all the light. It's not a moment. It's we who serve in this thing and pastors. It's our moment to come in. It's not private. You're welcome. Eight o'clock on Tuesday morning. But it's our moment to come up to here. And, and there can be from 20 to 30, 40, 50, 60 people in this room. But we come in while when there ain't no cameras and there's no applause and there's no choir and there's no band or nothing. It's just us and Jesus. Because why? We're reminding ourselves why we get to do what we get to do. That we still need the blood applied to our lives and we worship him when there is no one else around well there was a precious young lady that started coming with her father I, I, I saw the pastor Mike Pastor Scott happened to know him I never had met him and so I got to know Brett and he was very faithful and he would bring Gavita and his daughter Satara on Tuesday mornings and they would participate with us and that young lady over time I, I got to see her and know her. This past Tuesday, 
I asked him, I said, where, where, where's, where's our girl at? He said, well, can't come today, Pastor, can't come. And before he left, I just had her on my mind. I went over and gave him a hug and said, hey, give this to her and tell her I miss her. I hope to see her next Tuesday. And so he would go home, and the last thing he would do was hug her and give a wrap around and say, Pastor Ron says, this is from him, and he wants to give you a hug soon. And then a tragedy would take her life an hour later an hour later. I don't know when the enemy comes. He's such a thief. He still kills and destroys. But the blood of Jesus reaches farther than the enemy can reach. The blood of Jesus absolutely on our life. You understand to me, you can't get down too low. I, I got down very low 60 days ago. I didn't know what was going to happen. You can't get too far. You're not out of the reach of God. You're not out of the reach. Someone thought about it long enough to say, you know what? The blood of Jesus reaches even further than that. Can I have you to stand this morning? And I want you to cry out to God and, and join with Pastor David. Let's remind ourselves of this. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day You're never out of his reach. That's the good news today. We're never out of his reach today. We're never out of that, regardless of what goes on. This is one of the most rarest week when I actually turned in Monday words for the, all of those who've got to do things with what with the messages. Most of the time it's Thursday, but Monday, not knowing that Tuesday morning our hearts would be ripped out of us. And it would take the rest of the week just to keep ourselves in the presence of God to overcome. I'm telling you, in the day that I live in, in the day that you live in, don't live without the blood of Jesus on your life. Don't live without, in fact, make sure you're covered and one application will do just one application will do it'll do you for a lifetime and eternity